no idea. You should just be able to close it and have it like open behind and you can flick to it. Or you can just play along with me. Okay. So anyone who has had tutoring from me knows that I don't. <clears throat> if I ever use a PowerPoint slide, and you guys have seen it here, I don't put many, if not any words to accompany what I'm saying. Why might that be? Why do you think I just have a few guiding things on there and then we talk about it? What, what's your thoughts on why I go against the grain and I don't put much on my PowerPoint? You know what most people have? Most people have a time, a uh, concentration span in the seconds. You know what people do? They just read. Have you ever been reading something while someone's talking to you and then you realize that you have no idea what they were saying? Someone like, probably like your teacher. If they would put something up. So, humans are not very good at writing or reading and listening at the same time. So we're going to do research. We're going to do all these things for our PowerPoint. So should I leave it as should we leave it as a white background or should we? Should we make it something a little more adventurous? Anyone? What should I put it as? Dark black? Does that look terrible? People will judge what you're saying by what they see. If they're struggling to read it, guess what? They ain't listening to you. They ain't very good. Something minimal. That looks a bit, it depends on your audience as well. I wouldn't use something like this in a serious professional presentation. I really like that word minimal, Damien. Damien, sorry. Minimalist, professional. There we go. I think I've found my opening slide. Should your heading be one massive long piece of text or should it be succinct and to the point? I read this heading and I know exactly what is Jen. Sorry, someone's just coming. Okay. Should be short, should be to the point. When I read this title, I should know what I'm in for. So what should come next? based on what we're writing. Yeah, look what I, th I, I think, I like it, I like contents. Slide one. The problem is, and you'll see here, if you've got, it, it just, See what I mean about the contents? I, I like it, but I think it can look really messy. So 
David says, come out straight to the point. So what are the two things you can pick out of that heading? So intro. Introduction. So, what do people like to see? Pretty pictures. Yeah. But people often make the mistake as they just stick a picture on there, but they don't talk about it. Or it doesn't relate to what's being said, it just looks nice. If you're going to put a picture in there, refer directly to the picture. Um, so let's do, do some other screen pictures. So I'm going to pick a picture here. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing over here. There we go. So if you want to do this along with me, you can. So I'm going to argue for, I'm going to say COVID-19 is caused by coronavirus. Now, I must say, just for legality purposes, I do not actually believe it, but I'm going to argue it. So make sure the picture you put up supports, uh, makes sense in your argument. So my introduction is going to be, should I write, uh, At the moment, someone sees a block of text, what do they do? Do you think they sit there and read every word or they just kind of glaze over? <laughs> yeah. So. so. I say three main points per slide. When they're skim reading, do you think they're listening to? Very, very few people have the ability to read and listen at the same time. That immediately looks a lot better. I want to put dot points or something similar. So what should, if I write about something in here, should they, these be my main points? So if it's in my introduction, just like a normal assignment, should I talk about them? 
You can do all kinds of things to make this uh, so you can put them in the middle. I just want them to stand out. And when somebody is able to talk about a concept or an idea without even looking at the slides, do you know what that says to the people that are listening? It says that this person knows what they're doing. This person knows what they're talking about. Do you know how many very highly paid university lecturers that you take away the 150 words on each slide and they would have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And if you can confidently talk without even looking at the slides, the slides should be not for you. The slides should not be for you. The slide should be for the person that as you're talking and they're looking at that, they should be able to follow your voice along with them. Who's had a teacher, a lecturer, or whatever, just read back off the slide, word for word. Does, that per does it seem like that person knows what they're talking about? Your immediate thought is this person has no idea. Okay. So let's, the next, what should the next two slides be? If we're working in a logical order, order. So, yep, so should we introduce actually what is 5G and what, what is coronavirus? So we've written our introduction and now we're gonna delve a little bit more. So 5G and then so again, what am I gonna put in here? Another picture, you reckon? It's really difficult to, to talk about things in a presentation if you don't know much about. It's really obvious when someone has done one of these last minute because they just basically take their essay and they copy and paste it. They copy and paste it into the slides and uh, unfortunately it looks really bad. So I'm going to find a picture. What kind of picture should I find? So should it be scientific? So I'm going to use something like this. Oh. 5G, so 5G is replacing 4G. What is the other thing? What else can we say about 5G? That's related to healthcare or related to human health. Something. So, classic one is it has really powerful radio waves. And again, we're going to stick to our three 
three headings per slide. Because what do most people not have? Much of an attention span. Uh, what else we got? No, I can't think of anything. Uh, uh, it's a million. That's fast. So, okay, so 5G is replacing 4G. So now the person knows what we're talking about. Why is that not? So now the people that are reading this, what am I missing here? I'm making lots of statements, but what am I missing? I've taken this information from somewhere else, haven't I? So what do I need? Evidence, yep, so in the form of a reference, citation, yeah. So I'll find one. So we use in-text referencing, like we've used before. Uh, I'm just gonna say, so at your last slide that you make should be, Unfortunately, lots of people get in trouble and lose marks for not providing a reference list in a, not providing a reference list in a, um, uh, my brain is switched off, in a presentation. They think if I'm speaking it, then I don't need to provide the reference, but it's no different. So now we've done 5G, let's look at COVID-19. So I'm gonna find another picture. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish this present it back to you and you'll see, I think you'll see what I've been talking about. So insert the image. So it's a nice bright image. Never mind my very messy desktop at the moment. Sorry, technical issues. Yeah. So, nice bright image. There. So, what am I saying about COVID? Give me some three main points. where it started, these, yeah, disease caused by uh, what else? Starting with him, Damon has created So we've covered in three comments, the entire spectrum of COVID, where it started, what the disease 
this COVID-19 is caused by, so it's caused by a virus and has created a global pandemic. Okay, so we're gonna look at this from a, we're, we're giving this presentation to non-academic people. So I'm going to provide some evidence. Another thing that people do that is always annoying is people put tables with lots of information on their slides. Nobody has chance to read those. How would we? How would we show the uh, the evidence we have from a table? How would we visualize that? What would we use? Evidence. Global conspiracy. And this is um, another thing people forget is the, the headings. The headings draw people in as much as what you say. If people read the heading and go, oh, that's interesting. And they will keep listening. If your headings aren't very exciting, then they're less likely to switch back on. So Damon and Kelly have said that data works. You have to be careful because if you're t talking to lay people, then you can lose them with too much data. Let's see if I can find information on it. any graphs. I'm just looking at a photograph if you're wondering what I'm looking at. I can't find a graph. All right, let me put two different graphs on and you will tell me, should we, if I'm talking to a lay person, what kind of graph should I put on? <clears throat> no, I'll find a, a simple one and you can tell me which one you think people would more likely look at. If, I, if you had the chance to compare these to which one do you think we would use for a lay person? Let's just pretend they agree with what we're saying. <laughs> which one do you think the average person would understand best? The, Which one of those two would you use? So 
the second one, less things to focus on. Anyone else? Yeah, so less things to look at, less things to be confused by, less time spent thinking. So if you put a graph there, everything you write, uh, speak about in this slide should be based on that graph. Let's pretend that graph showed up. We're just making stuff up now as we can. Data shows. Is that too simple? So if I'm writing notes, is that too simple? Because there is such a thing as, as being too simple. So the answer to that question is yes, that is too simple. If I object. Uh, so we've got, th again, three things. So if I'm writing this, then that graph wants to be supporting that. The way to look very, very silly is to go and put a graph or some info on that and then write about it, but not realizing it doesn't back up what you're saying. So make sure any graphs or any figures that you put Makes sense. Okay. So we've got our introduction. Come on over these main points, which is 5G, 4G. We've linked them together. Now we prepare evidence to support. Disprove. So depending on the task, you may be asked to give a balanced view of something. Other tasks, you may be asked to argue a point. So more balance argument. This looks really bad having the heading over two lines. So evident. Should you just stack your presentation with just grass or should you use a range of different visuals? And what are you limit what are you limited by here? Oh, let's look at a really complicated diagram. And again, people put really complicated diagrams, but nobody can see them. Anybody read that?
And then they do this and completely distort it. Well, the picture doesn't fit in the boundaries. It looks terrible. So use minimalistic pictures where possible and then explain what the picture means. If you got rid of all this writing <clears throat> and just had that and explained it, you would get a lot better reaction from people. Don't go and just stick pictures. Don't just have a picture without any heading or explanation. So you don't want too much writing and you don't want not enough writing. Okay, so now we've provided our evidence, we've made our claim. Now what do we have to do? So now we need to make recommendations or if we were to Spell properly, make recommendations or remarks. So, this is where we make a decision. This is where we link to our evidence to say that this is, we have concluded that 5G does not cause COVID 19. We can you know, make arguments for or against. We can make a balanced argument, say that the evidence for one is equal to the other. Again, keep it simple. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's pretty much the same structure as your reports, as your essays. <clears throat> but people who get really good marks for essays don't always get good marks for oral presentation. So then we would do our conclusion. And what most people do is they just rewrite their conclusion from the essay or the assignment that they wrote that this was based on. It's exactly the same with the conclusion. We just go over what's already been said. The hardest part about writing a presentation is not writing the presentation. It's making sure you understand the topic so that you don't have to write a presentation. If that makes any sense at all. So the presentation is the easy bit. It's actually coming up with what you're going to say, not putting too much information on the slides and presenting it in a confident manner. Do you think that someone stands out like this or reading like this or a piece of paper? Does that say that they're confident? No, they are not. And when you're confident, you speak clearly. You don't rush. You give the impression that you know what you're talking about. There is a, a you know, saying confidence is key and I would completely agree with it. So we have recommendations, which again, just put three dot points. And if you follow a set pattern of three, people notice patterns. People like patterns, one, two, three. That doesn't have three, but it's supposed to have three. Conclusion again, three, You've spoken about three things, so your conclusion should have three subheadings. Reference list, you know, this might have 40 slides, 30 slides, 20 slides, however many. There's no hard or fast rule. They'll usually say in your task sheet how many you need. Now, I don't like that all this just white and black. Anybody else think we should change it? See if we can make this look nicer around here. 
So let's change the background. And this is another thing people do that looks terrible. <laughs> Anybody seen that? Anybody done that before? So you can't read the writing that's in front of the picture. Um, but you can make it look nice. Yeah. Control Z that away. Yeah, good, Damon. I like that. You've never done it. That's always good. So make it a transparent. Make it bright red. Again, not very nice. I mean, that doesn't look terrible, but <laughs> it doesn't look amazing. So, and another thing, sorry, I keep remembering things, is that the font and, and size should be consistent throughout. It looks really bad if you've got the first five slides in one font, size 12, and then the next five slides are in Calibri 17 or something. Um, it looks like you've copied and pasted the information. When you see that, that's the first thing I would assume. So. We can just change the theme. Let's get rid of the background. So. That's not too bad. But just consider your audience. I wouldn't use something like that for a really professional presentation. <clears throat> Who's done an oral presentation and then realized that they spoke so quickly that it took half the time it did when you did rehearse it at home? Uh, that's another big one. The more you have on your slides, the quicker you will try and get through the slides. So it's really important to have a minimal approach, minimalist approach. People cannot listen and read at the same time. They will do one of those things. Most people just sit there and read it and they won't actually take in what you said. <coughs> And a lot of people can go a whole lecture or class not actually having listened to anything to the lecturer has said. They might as well not even be there. Okay, well, I think that was everything for the oral presentations. So as little information as possible, consistency, so three topics per slide, or three headings per slide with one topic per slide. Make it look nice and professional, pretty pictures, easy to read graphs, confidence is king, make sure you reference and you should be fine for any future oral presentations. And I think that's it for this week. <laughs>